Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Lancer Custom Works, where I will be discussing the various mech builds you could make and play with Lancer. Goblin, is just fucking annoying, like seriously, when you play Goblin, you are loudly announcing that you just gonna be a fucking goose, terrorizing everyone. Everyone knows Goblin is good at hacking, everyone also knows Goblin has only 4 heat cap and is super fragile but who gives a shit, nobody hack a Goblin, it has 8 fucking base system points Jesus Christ, you can do anything with this thing and my god, people do make everything with this thing. In the following 40 goblin builds, you will see practically every single goblin systems get used a lot except meta hook for obvious reason, just so many autopod because if you gonna have lock on for days might as well get it, and all the whore OS upgrades because they are bloody good at what they do, and Osiris, because, Osiris. As for the roles, I don't care, goblin get everything, why, I don't know, it just does, it's fucking goblin, anyway let's go with controller support builds first, no I don't want to answer why it's not support controller instead or whatever let's go. This is trickster spirit, how a standard goblin build should look like, and it's nuts, it has 4 goddamn tech attack systems, full hacker talent, and Osiris because screw everyone, and it has all of these by putting 6 full point into systems and practically nothing else, good thing it has meta hook to get even more range but as soon as a witch shows up, it's gonna burn. With open door, that's a lot of painful save rolls, and withheld image alongside spotter, that's a lot of lock on and free attack with autopod. At this point you might be asking how many goblin builds have held image 11 there's 11 of them. Next is, Barry B. Benson, I give you 3 seconds to guess what this build does. If you can't, it's basically annoying as shit, it can fly with ridiculous speed, not even including ace, accelerate, blink charges, and multi-gear maneuver system yet, which can also be used to trip up enemy by forcing them to move into it, and as if 16 evasion isn't enough, it also has flicker field, and of course, all the fucking bees. Behind the back door is an infiltrator goblin with actual health this time, remember, infiltrator 2 works with any attack, so if you invade someone from hidden, they gonna feel like they got ran over by a road roller. Kai bioplating also aid in staying hidden, or just make this goblin better at escaping, and of course, this thing can turn invisible. Lil Sadist is called that because with Horo S1, a goblin can easily make anyone move through a minefield, and that's what happening here with Caltra, Webjaw, Javelin, or just plain Hex Mine, and the faster they move, the harder they feel. All Seeing Smoke and Mirrors is a goblin that likes to go even further beyond with Lock On, because it has Athena and Spotter, there's just so much Lock On. Meanwhile the enemy can't hit back at all because this goblin is also packing Neuro Spike, Horo S2, Veil Rifle, and cloaking field. The counterfeit phone from hell is a double NHP goblin with Osiris and Azura to completely break action economy in half, you effectively could perform 3 quick tech actions in one turn with this. It also has fuel rod gun and redundant systems upgrade to cool down rapidly, and when you activate core power and attach yourself to someone else, that person effectively has 6 quick actions, which is quite nuts. Laser powered goblin smasher is just like any other hacker goblin but since the poster gives such a lovely description of how you should use it, I figure why not. First, ordnance sucks, and a lot of blast or line weapons have it, this build solves all that problems as a support unit, using Horo S3 to make the targets stay there, Horo S1 to move them into a line, then use Bentham Foucault elimination to fire the big gun at your turn. This also works for vanguard CQB weapons like shotgun, and for blast, just get Mantico or Beckoner instead to gather up the hostile. Finally, this is Symbiosis Gift, a goblin that's also one third lich and kid, it's just a goblin with a whole bunch of support and controller systems stuffed into it, allowing it to work as anti-tech support, firepower enhancer, time manipulator, or just outright prevent enemy reaction as well as having all the lock-ons withheld image and spotter. And that's it for the controller support goblin, I don't feel like adding any more to this, you already know how a goblin works with enough tech attack systems, it's just a never ending nightmare. Anyway, striker controller, why is there so many of these things, what the fuck. Deus Ex Machina is a Terashima goblin because of course there's one, with ghost weave and infiltrator, you want to hide and just hit as hard as possible with the sword, just throw as much saves to the target as possible. With JK1 and multi gear, you can just move anywhere, and if you can't, 
just throw Osiris at them, Horo S2 also works as a very excellent protective system that just makes enemies targeting system confused as hell. Laser Shank Meltdown is a goblin that tries to make its target meltdown with triple plasma cutter, which with nuclear cavalier bonus heat and viral logic invade for even more heat, gives a lot of burn with last argument of kings. The rest is just bonus, but maybe you can drag someone with cable winch through a minefield or something. The WAP Goblin is a TTT Gaijis Goblin that WAP the shit out of people, either with point blank hacking with scanner swarm, or just punch them and grapple them with synthetic muscle netting, which mean this tiny goblin can lift a goddamn barbell with no problem. King Oberon is instead a way more mobile striker goblin with flight and ace, plus all the teleporting with fold knives. False Idol from Horo S2 and Singularity Motivator are very good at keeping Oberon alive, and if you feel like it, you can switch out Hunter Logic for Neuro Spike to play more into the supportive role. Gotta Hack Fast is an Azura Vanguard Goblin with a DSAS because fuck you and anyone within 30 feet, it also has 10 goddamn heat cap, meaning this thing could actually overcharge almost any time and with redundant systems plus fuel rod gun, it can cool down quickly if things get too hot. For the rest of his life is a gunslinger goblin with 5 catalyst pistols, reaching heat cap with a single barrage is a feature, and with multi-hit nature of the cat pistols, you can charge up gunslinger dice very quickly with beckoner to gather up enemies for I kill with my heart, add in lucifer for more damage, and you can definitely kill with your gun. This thing also has plasma gauntlet because if you aren't ready to die, you can't do anything with this build. Abandon the self in the temple of lioness is a seekomet goblin. No! Do I even need to explain how this build works at this point? Finally, this is the lesson of pointy stick go boom, a TTT goblin with a pointy stick that goes boom, it's gonna hit very hard with all its hacking systems too. And that's all on the striker support goblin. You know I totally figured that I could handle making this video but the truth is I can't, I'm slowly losing my shit. Next is the defender controller goblin, which is basically just... Yeah. This is Tortuga's Day Off, a goblin with 26 goddamn health, not only that, it has hyperdense armor to effectively double that, and guess what, damage reduction, goblin doesn't give a shit about damage reduction, it's fucking goblin. This thing can just stand near an ally and protect them to its fullness with Argonaut Shield, which with HDA, you effectively only take a quarter damage, Horo S2 also adds on. And if anyone gets too close, you have a shotgun, and now you have effectively trapped them in with Exemplar. Friends in low places is a Noah Goblin with support shield to guard everyone around it, effectively telling all the ranged NPC to go screw themselves, if the Sentinel drone didn't tell them out directly. Anyone that gets too close, once again, could get trapped in with Exemplar and get kicked to death by the entire team, like seriously, having someone affected by Exemplar and False Idol at the same time is just dipping them feet first into hell. Blessed Blade is another TTT Goblin that's also, of all thing, half Manticore Infiltrator. It has 23 health and 12 evasion, meaning it can put some of those health to use in Smite or Beckoner instead, and honestly, I'm only going on about this build because it dares to use EMP Pulse, in a goblin, absolute fucking maniac. Pesky Ankle Biter is a Scylla Goblin with monitor for all the reactions fire, but the damage isn't the point, getting all the enemies locked on is with Black Spot, add in Held Image and Spotter, I would be surprised if there's any hostile that isn't locked on by round 2. Scorpion also makes counter hacking even more painful, and with Siege Specialist, Vorpal Gun gets even more powerful. Finally, there's Itchy the Unscratchable, a Fade Cloak Infiltrator Goblin that likes to just throw Terrify from Hunter Logic and False Idol everywhere, with Wandering Nightmare to shut down enemy reaction fire completely. With Hunter and Fold Knife, you can get to anywhere quickly and with Exemplar, you can once again trap a target in a duel to the death. And that's all on the defender support, because with 8 goddamn base system points this tiny little shit can become anything it wants, anyway let's get going with the artillery builds, which are actually split into two types, the artillery controller, and the artillery defender, we are of course going with the controller first. The fire within me burns brighter wants one thing and one thing only, burn, dual burst launcher, all the tech attack systems, nuclear cavalier, once the target gets toasty, give them the last argument. Burst launcher also hands out impaired like candies, and this thing can also fly with ace to get all over the place and flicker field to be even harder to be shot at, it's goddamn annoying, so basically like any goblin build. Integrated gunner module is basically just death's head but way tinier, 
extra accuracy from Crackshot and Core Siphon makes the Vulture DMR even more deadly, and you have tracking bug and marker light to keep enemy from hiding within your sensor. Gun is instead a goblin with a tendency of having all the oracle spam, because when you have 8 base system points you can do anything, and with spotter plus Athena, both you and your allies can't miss at all. Objectively a terrible idea is an artillery defender goblin that packs a phase ready vulture DMR because screw shooting over the terrain, and funny thing is, tracking bug makes your target unable to become invisible, so just tag someone, go into the most solid cover possible, and you can shoot them all day long no matter where they are. Also, this thing has stasis barrier and Hor OS 2, so you can make spontaneous cover practically everywhere. Finally, this is dumpster fire, I of course saved the best for the last, because this thing is a displacer goblin, it has 12 heat cap so it's relatively safe to fire it but you might want to get some covers anyway, which this goblin provides, a lot. Add in walking armory with OP cal and crack shot, this displacer could also just set people on fucking quantum fire. And that's all on all the artillery goblin builds, because with enough bonus damage source, even single mount can become really deadly, or just extra annoying I guess. With everything done, I would like to thank all of my viewers that have submitted their builds for this episode, thank you all for your amazing builds that have given me physical pain. Now, let's bring in the topic for the next episode and I expect some seriously big brain builds coming right up, anyway that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.